was only a matter of time before I got around to them. Today we're talking about the Jane Davenport Mermaid Markers. These are watercolor markers and I do believe they are dye based and they are based on Jane Davenport's proprietary color blends, which I am intrigued by because I mean they are dye based markers. Um, and I picked these up through Michaels and they are distributed through American Crafts. So I'll go ahead and read the back to you guys. Dive into the ocean of your imagination with the free spirited Jane Davenport mermaid markers. These pre-filled watercolor brush pins are the perfect travel companions while on the go. And uh, my dear, sweet, wonderful viewers do know that I have seen and tested quite a few watercolor markers. I do really enjoy watercolor brush pins and brush pins in general. So if these work really well, these could be a lot of fun. And if they work poorly, I'm going to probably inflict them on one of my friends or use them instead for color fills in my sketchbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing open and get some paper out and we'll get to swatching. So here I have a Strathmore Field watercolor sketchbook and this is what I do for all of my watercolor marker and watercolor pencil and even watercolor swatches in. And previously I played around with Echo Lines watercolor markers and their liquid watercolors and I was very pleased. So, um, I don't know Jane, it's gonna be hard to compete with that. So we get 12 colors and they are for the most part very bright, saturated colors which just really seem to match the Jane Davenport um, sort of palette. So maybe that's what they mean by proprietary colors. And these are the sort of brush pins you tend to, I'll show you guys in a minute, but you tend to see for um, like Chinese made uh, brush pins, like the, in fact, it uses the exact same body as the sketchbook signature brush pin. And I have over here a Jane Davenport watercolor brush. Um, I picked this up at Michael's as well, as in this is meant to hold water, but I put fountain pen ink in it. And um, you can see that there, her water brushes are significantly smaller by, and in fact, it uses a different body as well, which is interesting, significantly smaller than her, uh, the watercolor brush pin she released. And um, in terms of sort of um, individual bristled watercolor brush pins, there are several other watercolor brush pins on the market. Give me a sec and I'll go grab a few. Before you, we have a selection of other watercolor markers that do indeed have individual bristles. Who knew? So we have a Pintel brush pen and it's not really used for watercolor so much, but it is pretty much what all of these other guys are based off of. This was the first. You also have the Neo Pico 4 and um, I have given these a very favorable review over on the blog. I really enjoy them. They are water-based markers and you can get watercolor effects with them. You have the Zig Clean Colors, which I'm sure all of you guys have at least heard about. They're very popular right now. And then you also have the student or children's grade, honestly, Bien Fang watercolor markers. These are several years old, but I keep them around as an example for just this sort of situation. So when you're talking to somebody like me about watercolors, I am a watercolor artist. I have high expectations when you're selling them as watercolor markers. However, uh, these are being sold as mermaid markers. So I feel like I feel like that is a pretty clever ploy there because I can't actually judge them as full grade watercolor markers. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these neon yellow rings from my markers and go ahead and get them activated. But like so many water brush pins, you have this, which prevents the two from, you, which prevents the cap from puncturing into the cartridge. That's what this is. This is a cartridge. Oh, I just realized I have some more. Ha! I also have these um, Kuratake brush writers. And if you guys are familiar with uh, Wink of Stella or Wink of Luna or the, um, let me see if I can find them the Crafter's Companion Spectrum Noir glitter pens. Let me grab all those for you. Those are also examples of watercolor. These are water-based water brush pins. Watercolor brush pins that utilize an individual um, 
bristle brush. So, you know, those little nylon bristles are all individual bristles. And it has a cartridge body. This is where you guys find out I'm a huge, huge nerd. <laughs> See, like that cartridge body with the puncturable tip. That's the individual brush. So yeah, this design is actually incredibly common. It's fairly popular and generally with good reason. Um, while these brushes don't actually behave like um, a natural hair brush, they do offer some effects that a single solid foam rubber nib or a felt fiber nib might not be able to offer. So I'm gonna go ahead, prep these. And if you enjoy this video, I highly recommend you check out the Frugal Crafters review of the Mermaid Markers. So I'm going to set all of the, get all of these started and I'm going to store them inverted so we can get the uh, ink, watercolor dye, whatever you want to call it, into the tip. I haven't finished, but there is something I want to point out to you guys. The normal levels of force that most of us when starting one of these markers or these types of markers would use, it will um, actually bead out and you're going to have to clean your caps. So I'm going to activate all of mine and then go through with a Q-tip and clean out my caps. And the reason you want to do that is just so that it doesn't really make a huge mess and get all over your hands. Um, I find that when this sort of stuff gets on my hands, it's going to get everywhere and there's just no no uh, salvaging it after that. And I've also found that these are a little finicky to screw on because they are kind of using a cheaper body than a lot of water brushes. So, and uh, you can also make your own, to an extent, you can buy inexpensive, if you can find them, they are on eBay, you can buy inexpensive water brushes and fill them with fountain pen inks or um, liquid watercolors or whatever you actually have handy instead of having, not, not that you have to, but instead of going out to buy. So you see I'm struggling out there, see it beads out before it goes out into the, into the brush itself which is sort of a design flaw from buying and repurposing these inexpensive little doodads. So I'm going to finish these off, clean off those caps and see you guys in a bit. So while these are sort of doing their thing, I'll go ahead and read this included card of tips for you guys. Mermaid markers are filled with a vibrant, dye-based, non-lightfast, water-soluble ink. Once empty, fill markers with water and use as a water brush. To begin using mermaid markers, unscrew the pen top and remove the disposable yellow ring. Do not replace the yellow ring or the pen will leak. To keep the mermaid markers fluid and writing smoothly, occasionally squeeze push on the barrel of the marker. To create color gradations, touch brush tips together of diff touch brush tips of different colors together. To blur or lighten colors, simply touch the brush tips to water before using. If the nylon brush tip dries out or becomes misshapen, submerge the brush tip in hot water for one to two minutes and reshape. Oh, okay. XOXO Jane Davenport. For more tips and techniques, visit www.janedavenport.com. Instagram at Jane Davenport. All right, so there are loads of other things in the Jane Davenport line, including face templates, which as a comic artist, I kind of have mixed feelings about. But you know, whatever, not everything is made for me. So I gotta clean up this mess and get rid of all of these yellow rings. But I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, all cleaned up and ready to go. So we've got 12 markers to swatch and each marker comes with a color name. Move those out of the way. Those do not seem to be listed on the outside of the box. So I will read them to you. We've got seaweed and I'm gonna do two types of tests. I'm gonna do just straight swatch like that. And then I'm gonna grab my water brush and I'm going to blend it out a little bit, right? See how it takes to the water since it is a mermaid. And for tricks like this, I need paper towels, which have disappeared. So that is a thing. And I also am going to utilize a bulldog clip because my paper wants to flip over. So I'm gonna go grab my requisite supplies, refill my water brush and be right back. 
So I do like that they suggest that you just go ahead and refill these with water once they're empty. I do um, appreciate a good repurposing and they are actually water brushes. So, oh, and I'm bleeding, of course. So um, I'm happy to see that. Okay, next with Siren. These are all gonna be water puns, aren't they? Next is Byron Bay. Then comes Blue Bottle, although somebody gets something cool because it's Medusa Moscardon. Wish ours was named Medusa. Oh, leaky leaky. Wish ours was named Medusa, that's cool. Now, zoom in for you guys. Deep Sea. Ooh, that's a nice purple. I mean, that's not, for a lot of people, that's not going to be a usable purple, but it's a nice purple. Like that is like dark sign purple. Jellyfish, also Medusa. Aguamala. Come on, this is not such a nice color. That's okay. This is, after all, her personal palette. And it's kind of cool to see, um, in the crafter market, it's kind of cool to see um, a selection of, okay, that's Pirate's Gold. Um, it's nice to see a selection of colors that, uh, I don't know, are a little less primary colors. And I know that Ranger does a lot of stuff with like Tim Holt's personal preference of colors. So you get a lot of muted colors. And I actually happen to really like that palette. I just don't happen to like the products. And that red is lobster, except that's a cooked lobster. Cause. Alrighty, starfish is a very hot pink. I think coral might've been a good name for that, but you know. And this one is coral. Okay, makes sense. Ah, uh, these are leaky and not in a good way. Beach. And then we got one more. It is a brown and that would be reef. So in general, I'm not really a fan of kind of like the twee names, but at least these are themed twee names. So um, I can kind of forgive that. And so far everything, okay, so with water-based markers, watercolor markers, when you add water, um, what often happens is they will split out into their individual dyes. With these, it looks like every color they selected is true regardless of adding water. So there's no color chromatography going on right now. There's no splitting into the individual dyes, which is something that I look for when I'm recommending watercolor markers to people is that it avoids doing that um, just because that can be hard to control, especially when it comes to skin tones. And also reef um, lightens up nicely so it could work for darker skin tones beach is a little uh, but you know for once for once we have the darker skin tones handled a little better than the lighter skin tones I'm not gonna complain about that so I'm going to let these dry and another point of consideration is um, how reworkable are your watercolor markers? Some will completely reactivate when you add water, no matter how long they've dried, and that can cause a lot of mud on your paper. Some are really good about kind of drying into the paper and staying where they where they were placed. So um, I'm going to let these dry for at least an hour, and then I'm going to come back and um, try to reactivate some of them. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, so back to the mermaid markers. Already went ahead and swatched everything. So I said that kind of weird swatch. Get Tom tired. So it's been about an hour. I'm gonna zoom in for y'all and we're going to go back into these and see if they can be reactivated. You want some reactivation because um, otherwise it's just not really going to, um, when you're painting, you're not gonna be able to blend colors very well if it absolutely doesn't reactivate, but you don't want kind of this much reactivation um, because it's going, it's, it's basically acting as though, oh, see this purple, that weird mauve color 
took a little more scrubbing, but look, it left a hole kind of in the color. Let's see if I can get that a little more on camera for you guys. But they're basically doing what I figured they would, would do as dye-based watercolors where they completely reactivate every time you add water, which is going to make layering pretty much impossible. So, oh, come on beach. So my advice is if you're going to use the mermaid markers, either be prepared for the colors to reactivate and possibly get muddy or um, kind of plan strategically and plan accordingly. So I will see you guys again really soon when I have a field test for these markers. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the Dane, Dane Davenport. Uh, Jane Davenport uh, Mermaid Markers by American Crafts and sold through Michaels. If you enjoyed this video, uh, you might want to subscribe to my channel for more marker reviews like this. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you again really soon. Bye!